How is a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution controlled by the mass of a molecule or particle? Well, first, let's assume that we're keeping the temperature the same because temperature plays its own role in changing these Maxwell-Boltzmann distributions. So let's say that we have some samples and they're all the same temperature. Temperature is not a factor. I'm gonna start with a traditional Maxwell-Boltzmann curve and I'm gonna label it with, I don't know, argon 40, or rather, this is a particle that weighs 40 atomic mass units each. And they, it's a noble gas, so there's hardly any intermolecular forces that attract these particles to each other. It's ideal, that's what I'm trying to say. How is this affected by, say, heavier particles? Well, the heavier a particle, the less kinetic energy can affect the speed. Kinetic energy is one half mv squared, for those of you who remember any physics. And so as the mass of a molecule goes up, as if they have the same kinetic energy, which is how we can how temperature is measured, it means that v or the average speed has to go down to compensate. Ek, kinetic energy of each particle, is constant, well, on average, at a specific temperature. And so, if the average, if the temperatures are the same, the average kinetic energy of the particles is the same. And so, if m goes up, v has to go down. That's what we're trying to get at here. So, a heavier particle will have a lower average speed. The peak of the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution has to move left in order for the average speed to be slower. Now, because this is a probability distribution, probability density function, if this curve moves slightly to, if the peak moves slightly to the left, it's going to have to rise as well because you are more probably at those slower temperatures. You don't have as wide of an array of speeds that are even realistically possible. So, for uh, heavier particles, I want the peak of your Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution to move up and to the left, more probably at slower speeds. It needs to look about the same. You need to start at zero, zero, and rise and rise and rise, and then start to peak and, and you know hit the top, like the top of a hump graph here. Now, you've been above the orange curve the whole time, or, you know, the lighter particles curve. So I need you to drop back down below it and then start to approach your x-axis. Now, I don't want you to hit the x-axis. This is what mathematicians call an asymptote. You get closer and closer and closer to it, but it never hits zero. And I know it's impossible for particles to have a speed of, like, the speed of light, but... You know, probability-wise, it's, it's very, very low, but technically not zero. Something along those lines. So a heavier particle like xenon, xenon weighs, I forget, I think it's 131. Don't quote me on that. A heavier particle with a heavier mass has its peak up and to the left compared to a lighter particle. And if you have an even lighter particle than that, I want you to move the peak down and to the right from there. So again, it's going to be a hump graph, but you've got to peak down and to the right compared to where you did for the more relatively heavier particles. Nice. So for the lighter particles, I don't know, I'll just label this helium-4 so you can see how these molecular masses are changing, you know, the distribution. For lighter particles, you're more probably at higher speeds because a certain temperature can get the lighter molecules to move faster because it's the kinetic energy that is constant. And then the heavier particles are more probably moving slower. So that peak is higher and to the left, aka slower on this speed axis. The key bits if you're trying to draw this yourself are the heavier the particle, I want it to be higher than the other curves on the left of the curve, and I want it to be below the other curves as you approach the horizontal asymptote here. 
compare that to what I did for the ultralight particles, which are low on the slow side of the axis and relatively high on the right-hand side or fast side of the speed axis. The last thing I'm going to point out, and you don't have to be super accurate about this, you just can't be egregiously bad about it, is that the area under each of these is supposed to be about the same. So I don't want one curve to be way higher here and way higher over here. They have to cross somewhere. The blue curve is higher than the orange one in this area, but it's lower than the orange one in this area. Does this area here look to be about the same area as here? I don't know, probably-ish, right? It's just not so egregiously bad that I would lose marks for it. Thanks for being with me, and best of luck.